This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. Let's start by going over some very basic networking terminology and concepts. Now we're going to go over all this in depth in this training, but in this movie we just want to make sure we have kind of a basic idea of these networking concepts. The first is going to be a local area network, and this is also called a LAN. And a LAN is a computer network that connects computers and devices in a limited geographical area. So normally it would be an office building or your home. Let's say at your home you have a couple of computers. They're connected to your switch and router at home. And you can share files between those computers. That would be a local area network. And a local area network is normally very fast. Or at your work, at your office building, normally all your computers are connected to switches that are connected together and those switches are connected to a router. And that would be a local area network. But what about if you have two offices? Let's say one office in San Diego and one office in Phoenix and those two offices need to communicate together. Well somehow you'd have to connect them and you'd connect them through a wide area network. And this is also called a WAN. And WANs are normally a bit slower than local area networks. And a lot of times the actual WAN link or WAN connection, we have to rent or lease from like a phone company or an internet service provider. Because it would be very expensive to run your own line between your office in San Diego and your office in Phoenix, for example. The next term is TCP IP. And this is actually a suite of protocols that was developed back in the 1970s and 1980s. And if you're not familiar with what a protocol is, it's basically a set of rules that you have to follow in order to communicate. And TCP IP is what the internet uses. Therefore, it's the most popular suite of protocols that almost all of us use. And almost all local area networks use TCP IP as well. And if you're using TCP IP, then you most likely have an IP version 4. This is version 4 here, IP address. And this is what one looks like, 192.168.6.100. And you'll also have a subnet mask and a gateway. So let's go over to a computer real quick and take a look at that. So I'm on a Windows 7 computer, and I'm just going to type in CMD. Let's open up a command prompt. And I'm going to type in IP config. I'll just expand this out so we can see it. And we can see here I have an IP version 4 address, 192.168.6.3. If another computer needs to communicate with my computer, then they'll need to know my IP address. And there are a lot of different ways it can find out my IP address. A common way is through DNS, or a domain naming system. And it allows a computer to look up a name of another computer and get its IP address. Also, you can see I have a subnet mask and a default gateway. Now subnet stands for subnetwork and it's a way we can take a larger network and actually break it up into smaller networks. And we're definitely going to get into subnet masks in depth later on. But for now we just need to know that it breaks up larger networks and it makes it so that if we're trying to communicate with another computer that's not on our subnetwork then we forward that information to our default gateway. And here's the IP address of our default gateway. Our default gateway is normally going to be a router. And a router's job is to find the network we're looking for and then forward that information over to another router or that network. The next concept is going to be a MAC address. And on all Ethernet networking cards that are in your computer, they have a MAC address, also called a hardware address, actually burnt in to the card. And notice it uses numbers and letters. This is actually hexadecimal format. We'll talk about this later on as well. And on an Ethernet network, in order for one computer to communicate with another computer, we actually need to know the destination computer's MAC address. And we're going to go over that in depth later on as well. The next term we're going to talk about is a bit. And a bit is either a 0 or a 1. This is also called off or on. And this is actually how your computer thinks. Your computer actually only thinks in zeros and ones. And it's also how information is actually tra transferred over a physical wire. It's actually passed in zeros and ones. 
And then those zeros and ones make up nibbles and bytes. A nibble is actually four bits, and a byte is actually eight bits, also called an octet. And we're going to become very, very familiar with bits, nibbles, and bytes as we go forward with this training. And I've already used the term Ethernet. Ethernet is a very common protocol we use for local area networks. And we're also going to hear the term packet and frame. And when we talk about packet or frame, we're talking about the data as it moves up and down what's called the OSI model, and we'll definitely talk about that. But we're basically referring to the data as it gets passed back and forth over a network. Now we're going to see some symbols over and over again when we look at diagrams for Cisco equipment. The first one is going to be a router. And this symbol, it's kind of a, a cylinder with various arrows on it, is a symbol for a router. This is a symbol for a switch. And these are symbols for a hub. And these are just standard symbols that Cisco came up with when we diagram our networks. And we're going to see a lot of diagrams. Also in diagrams, we have links between devices. And a serial link is normally characterized by a kind of a red lightning bolt between two devices, such as routers. And an Ethernet link is normally a black straight line. So this was just a very, very basic overview to kind of get us used to using certain terminology. And now let's get into it a little bit.